Hello everyone. Uh, I am Kavya Ravi Chandran. I am going to teach today a concept called dual concept. Very, very important topic right from your financial accounting till your SBR, including financial reporting, of course. So what we are going to learn, ma'am, what is dual concept? Or first of all, how is it going to help us in dual concept? Like what is it going to help in our, uh, you know, financial reporting or statements? See, end of the day, we are going to prepare financial statements for an organization. So if you guys would have learned something called, <clears throat> you know, art of recording, classifying and all of that as the definition of accounting, the first point that we are talking about, you know, uh, recording happens based on the journal entry. So the journal entry is always based on two different terminologies called debit and credit. So where we have to pass any transaction, every amount that you bring into the business should have two different effects. One is debit, another one is credit. How do we decide which is going to get debited, which is going to get credited will be learnt in this particular topic, which is called as dual concept. Yeah. So without delaying, let's get into the session, people. Starting from, um, as I said, the importance of debit and credit. It is very much to, it will it, be treated as the fundamental topic for you to record the transactions in, into the organization, first of all. So understand, <clears throat> How does the role of debit and credit works or uh, you know what what are we going to do with this for that you need to always know there is something called elements of financial statements guys what are the elements of financial statements you would have learned that already at the beginning of your studies if not go to my playlist financial accounting may you'll be able to find out something called elements of financial statements go through that but here i will just give a glance for you to have an understanding what is elements of financial statements if you have studied this will be a revision for you or if you come from bigger background like ca or you come from bcom background by now you should know what is the elements of financial statements i think in a in a whole financial statement we have two financial statements in the business one is statement of pnl another one is statement of financial position both the financial statements if you combine these two the maximum transaction the type of transactions that you can expect in the business would be only five yeah assets expenses capital or equity income and liabilities these are all the five different transactions or a type of transactions that you can expect so understand what is asset and expenses these both i treat these both are an expenditure which is spent by an organization if the person is spending on a long-term expenditure like if this will fetch money from for my business for a very long time we treat it as assets yeah so it will be used in generating revenue only for a particular period of time like you know one year period then we call it as expenses right it directly involves in generating revenue we call it as revenue expenditure which is always treated as expenses if it is spent to earn you know increase the earning capacity we call it as assets now comes the business has to raise funds to the organization you know for the business purpose we have to raise funds there are two types of funds that we can raise one is from owners itself which is called as capital or equity second one is liabilities where an outsider money maybe i get money from bank loan or debentures or loan notes yeah or i'll go ask one of my friend to give money we call it as liabilities and the ultimate another last point is income you run a business to generate income by the way yeah what is income is sales that you make and whatever the revenue that you generate from that will be treated as what will be treated as income so these are all the five major types of transactions that you can expect to have in the organization ma'am that means only five anything else any other type of transactions that we can expect in the business See, we can expect other type of transactions too, but that is not treated as elements of financial statement. Ma'am, what is the other one? See, as an owner, I can go ahead and draw money from for my personal use. Yeah, if business is running and business is making profits, my job is end of the day, I'm also human. Maybe company don't want any kind of kanapina expenses, but we as humans need expenses. Yeah, we have to run day-to-day day -day life. For that, if it is a sole proprietorship, we treat it as 
drawings. If it is a company, we call it as dividends. So this is the next type of transaction that you can expect. This is only for the pure purpose of passing the journal entry people. This does not affect your elements of financial statements. End of the day, your elements of financial statements are only five. Assets, expenses, income, liability, capital or equity, only five. Okay. So, but is there any other type of transaction that can happen in the business? Yes, that is nothing but dividends or drawings. Okay, we have six different types of transactions, five elements. What is each element? What is the definition of each element? You can go and search a video called elements of financial statements, which will help you to understand that these are all the basic fundamental topics that you should know before you start your preparation towards financial reporting or SBR. Okay. So let's go and understand, as I said, drawings and dividends. Uh, what is drawings and dividends? If owner withdraw any money from the organization, we call it as drawings. If it is sole proprietorship and if it is a company, we call the same thing as dividends. Okay. Let's move to the next bit. This is very important. You need to understand. See, there is no rules. Ma'am, why, <clears throat> why we debit? What is favorable? Is debit favorable or unfavorable? Is credit favorable or unfavorable? So, yeah. Most of the students comes to me asking, ma'am, debit is good, not good for the business and credit is good for the business. You should eliminate the thought of debit is unfavorable and credit is favorable. Why do you have to eliminate that thought? See, the people who have built a conceptual concept, there is no purpose that they have kept. Debit is for certain transactions. Credit is for certain transactions. My ultimate goal, their ultimate goal back then was to provide one element or one terminology for one set of transactions, another terminology for another set of transactions. That's the reason debit and credit has different meanings outside the world. Inside the accountancy, we have only definition. Definitions are man-made. Meanings are not man-made. That has come from the, uh, meanings are also man-made to be honest, but that has come from very long time. But industry specific are nothing but the definitions. Because if you see the word credit, we also use something called, Are I don't want to give a credit on this to you. You know, that talks about, credibility of somebody but inside the accounts creditors we just use that as a terminology to achieve dual concept so we have to segregate we have six different types of transactions three will have debit balance three will have credit balance which and all three will have debit balance all the cash outflow money or payable end of day from the business to other person we call it as what business point of view not the owner's point of view please think business point of view i have to give money to somebody we call it as what we call it as debit nature of balance if i have to get money from somebody we call it as credit nature of balance for example take assets take expenses and drawings these three from the business point of view the money goes to another person yeah so you go ahead and purchase asset what happens you will pay money and they will give you asset my asset is coming no but money is going right ultimately think about Ultimately, think about the money being going outside. Okay. And let's then the second cash flow that outflows expenses. You have to run day to day business, which we call it as what? Which we call it as expenses. Maybe you paying rent. Yeah. You or you are purchasing some goods for resale purpose or uh, you pay salary or you pay electricity bill. All this comes under expenses, which is again a cash outflow. Then comes drawings. I already told you what is drawings. These three will have a nature of balance debit. Why nature of balance debit? Ultimate goal is to pass journal entry where every transaction should have two effects. That's all my goal. For that, I have to segregate. I have treated all cash outflows as debit balance, nature of balance. And then I have treated all cash inflows as credit balance. Income, you go ahead and sell product, you will get income right and liabilities you go ask bank they will give loan to the business so for from a business point of view money is coming in right yeah so we call it as cash inflow and capital or equity owner is giving money to business end of the day that is also called as cash inflow right so considering the nature we have kept nature of balances as credit now ma'am why so much of drama why so much of uh, difficulty in passing journal entry I should know nature of balance. I should know what is, uh, you know, elements of financial statements. ASAP, why do I have to do? You guys understand? I, we were following, I was especially following for something called, uh, you know, uh, golden rules of accounting. That is the traditional model that we use uh, 
when it comes to passing journal entry so when i was in my 12th standard my accounting faculty has told me that uh, you have to debit the receiver credit the giver if it is a personal account and if it is a real account debit what comes in credit what goes out and she told me what is personal account all the natural and artificial person comes under personal account all the assets will come under real account then she asked me one day to pass the journal entry she asked me uh, pass the journal like there is an amount which is being paid to you know received from the debtor and she asked me to pass the journal entry I have gone ahead and debited cash at a bank because cash is an asset. Debit what comes in, credit what goes on. Debtor paid. Now the credit entry. I don't know whether I have to follow personal account or real account. If I treat debtor as a because debtor will be written as current assets in our statement of financial position, right? So debit what goes out. I think the debtor balance is going out. That's the reason we are crediting. Then, but my friend said, no, debtor is a Either artificial person or natural person, since he is giving us, we are gonna credit. End of the day, we are crediting. We treat personal account or real account. We are crediting. But I got this major doubt. I went and asked my faculty, and she didn't have any answer to that. Then slowly I realized it is not only that there are so many transactions like that where we don't know whether it goes to personal, real, or nominal. Sometimes we end up passing the right journal entries. End of the day, the result that we get is proper. But the decision making goes for a toss there, and and we think about result oriented rather than the journey. Then I thought, okay, I'll try modern rules of accounting. How does modern rules of accounting works? When I was going through, I felt there is very less flaws in modern rules of accounting. Why less flaws in the modern rules of accounting? You see, now we know the nature of balances. We know six different types of transactions can happen in the business. Three can be classified into cash inflows. Three can be classified into cash outflows. Cash inflows, debit nature of balance. Cash, sorry, cash outflows, debit nature of balance. Cash inflows, credit nature of balance. Right? You see this. Expenses, assets and drawings. Cash outflows, debit balances, nature of balances. Liability, income, capital, credit balances, nature of balances. My modern rules of accounting says if the element is increasing copy paste the nature of balance if the element is decreasing do the vice versa entry i felt this is very very easy to be honest see expenses nature of balance is debit i know nature of balance is debit how i know it's a cash outflow so cash outflow is debit balance if it increases go debit it you pay more rent debit rent ex rent account let's say what if it is decreasing vice versa credit it likewise let's say income sales the nature of balance is credit so you make more sale i'll go credit because that's the nature of the balance let's say there's a sales returns happening i'm debiting so it reduces so this is how i felt this can be the more better way to pass the journal entries keep this table as your bible or your quran or your bhagavad gita put it somewhere take the screenshot take a print out and just copy you know paste it in your rooms before you learn journal entry because this is the very 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 foundation for most of the students before you get into financial reporting or sbr okay so you see this table pause the video for a minute please write it down if you're really watching my video okay now understand i'll take some examples yeah let me not waste time on that see ma'am this table is difficult then what i suggest remember two words in your mind head debt click debit expenses assets drawings D for debit, E for expenses, A for assets, D for drawings. If it is increasing in nature, credit, C for credit, L for liability, income, I for income, C for capital. I will go credit, income, liability, capital. If it is increasing, if you know this by default, you will vice versa entry. If it is decreasing, this short form, please keep it in your mind, everyone. Okay. I'll just wind up with a small example on uh, journal entry. Some of the examples of journal entries. Let's read that. See, I have acquired an asset. Transaction is purchased equipment for five thousand dollars in cash. Equipment is also an asset. Cash is also an asset. I told you, if you, ma'am, I don't know how does equipment comes under cash. You know, assets. Cash comes under assets. Watch my elements of financial statements to understand that better. Yeah, equipment is a asset. Cash is also an asset. Okay, equipment is increasing. If you purchase equipment, it increases. I will go debit. Cash is decreasing because I have to pay. I will go credit. Similarly, look at this. I have earned revenue of three thousand dollars. So, but the person has not paid. It is to be received later. If you see, 
if I just move my head this side. Do, so what do we do? Accounts receivable is an asset. I have to receive and that increases. I will go debit. I made a sale that will increase. The sale is an income. I will go credit. So this is how I'll go ahead and pass the journal entry people. So I would like to thank you guys for watching this entire video. And uh, if you guys have any doubts, of course, you can go ahead and comment on the section, comment section, whatever questions you have. And if you want to know more about my offline lectures or hybrid lectures, you can just post your details or you can take my mail ID and drop a mail and I will be able to please drop a mail along with your contact details so that I'll be able to contact you and we can have further discussions. Go to my playlist to understand more and more videos on the basics for your journey to the entire finance field. Thank you guys. Take care.